I want to work on coming back to God. In order for you to come back to him, you had to leave him. Very familiar scripture in the book of Chronicles. And then I also want to go to Revelation. Now many of you that are listening, you, many of you are familiar with this scripture. Second Chronicles, if I'm correct. Chapter 7 and verse 14. Follow me in your Bible. There's a whole lot of you that have left the Lord for whatever reason. In your mind, you got a reason. In God's mind, you don't have none. So I want to say, well, why would God think like that, Pastor Jennings? Well, consider this. Whatever you went to, and whoever you went to, is it better than God? Has it done more for you than God? Can it do more for you than God? Did it give you life? Is it responsible for the clothes on your back and the food in your mouth? Roof over your head. Now, if you're arrogant and self-righteous, you would say, ain't nobody responsible for that but me, Pastor Jennings. What a fool. What a fool. Man can't work unless God gives his body the ability to function. I don't care how many colleges you went to, how many degrees you have. If God don't give your mind the ability to retain information, you still can't do nothing. When is the human family going to realize that everybody, oh God, everything. Thing. Glory to God, I'm laboring with God's help and by God's permission, time after time again, they get you to see that only God is the most important thing in the universe. Everything else that we see, everything else that we touch, everything else that we smell or feel is going to pass away. I said it's going to pass away until the Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away. One scripture says, and the works therein are going to be burnt up. So viewers, many of you left God and many of you never came to him. You're preoccupied. You are slave to a bottle of liquor. You are slave to a cigar. You're a slave to a cigarette, a slave to that man, a slave to that woman, a slave to that man-made religion that can't be found nowhere in the Bible. That's right. Why is it that holiness is having such a international impact on the world? It is because God have used this message as a tool of his. Yeah. To loose the shackles right. of all them that want to be free from the powers of Satan. That's right. Religion as a whole is not designed to set you free. No, 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 no. Not religion. Not religion. The religion of men is designed to put you in bondage. More bondage and more bondage. What is the worst form of bondage? Ignorance. Ignorance. Anytime you're being led wrong, taught wrong, then you are being placed into bondage. That's right. It is the knowledge of God that liberates God's people. And ye shall know the truth. Hear this? In St. John chapter 8 and verse 32. God talking. And ye shall know the truth. Ye shall know what's right. And the truth. And what's right. Shall make you free. Will deliver you. That's right. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Beautiful. Ye shall know what's right. That's right. What's right is God. That's right. You're going to know truth. That's a promise. You shall know the truth. He said you shall know it. That's right. That means he's going to make sure that he have it out there. That's right. 
So you can get a hold of it. And, and the truth learn shall it. make you free. Now you got to learn it. You got to hear it in order to be free by it. That's right. And this is why you can see over social media, no other religious program is attacked by religion like the truth of God is. That's right. Oh, they don't want folk to listen to it. If men find out there's anyone in their congregation listening to it, they're going to lay you out. Yeah. Your preacher going to tell you don't watch it, but he's watching it. Yeah. Wives will leave their husbands if their husband wants to be holy. That's right. Husbands will leave their wives if the wives want to be holy. But if you want to sell crack, they stay with you. Oh, yes. You want to go to the club, they stay with you. They would even stay with you if you agree to rob somebody. That's right. They'll stay with you. To commit a crime, they'll stay with you. That's right. To obey God, they'll say something wrong with you. Amen. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 7. I want you to hear this. I want to take my time and soak you. Mm -hmm. All right, William. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and at verse 14. What is it? If my people. Look at here. If my people. God let us know that not even all his people is going to obey this. That's right. But the very first statement if is telling us, he's giving us an opportunity. That's right. An opportunity is being presented to us from the Lord. Now, you can't get a greater opportunity than that. No. God gives you an opportunity. That's right. And it's guaranteed. That's right. It comes with a lifetime guarantee attack. That's right. If you simply do this. That's right. All right, what is it? If my people. If my people. Which are called by my name. Which are called by my name. First stage, what? Shall humble themselves. Submit. Humble. Holy. Glory to humble. God. Come on. That's it. Come on. That's it. Well, yeah, called by God name. Hallelujah. Called. God has spoken and have called the whole earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. That's right. And if he call you by his name. That's right. Which means he wants you to take on his name. That's right. Taking on his name is not narrowed down to just his name only. But you also have to learn God works. For the name of Jesus, not only is it the name of God, but it's the occupation of the Lord. That's right. Eh? That's right. Jesus is his name. Christ is his movement. Are you getting me with? <laughs> That's right. Christ means anointing. And when you are anointed by God, God is moving on you. That's right. Jesus means Savior, and to save, God has to work. That's right. So when you learn his name, you got to also learn his work, his occupation. Yeah. And God wants you to have all of it. That's right. So he wants to call you by his name. That's right. In other words, he used his name to save you. That's right. From whatever you're in. That's right. And then once his name, glory to God, is introduced to you, it pulls you, it delivers you, it brings you out from whatever you're in. Now you got to learn how to utilize his name by living by his name. That's right. When you learn God's occupation, yeah. you'll find the characteristics of God, the ways of God, the thinking of God made manifest in your life for the purpose of God. Yeah. That's right. So God want to call you viewers and you that are here That's right. because the devil been called you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, the devil been called you and, and you hearken to him. That's right. Amen. The That's devil said, come on, Bill, get a pack of cigarettes. You say, all right, devil. <laughs> devil said, well, don't you, devil asked you, you got a light? You said, <laughs> sure. That's right. 
Devil say, honey, we're going out to the club tonight. Yeah, I'll be there to pick you up at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Devil calling you. Devil calling. Hmm? That's right. Yeah. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Devil call that man. Hey, fella, you want to be a woman? Yes. That's right. Glory to God, the devil call you. That's right. Hmm? No, you're not. Devil call that white brother. Hey, don't you know you better than nobody else? Hey, you better than everybody else? Yeah, I know it. Devil call. Devil call. Devil call the black man. Hey, black man, don't you know you are the original God? Right on. That's right. Devil calling you. That's right. In other words, the devil, when he called, his call is to destruction. Yeah. His call is to the fulfill his will that will put you at odds with God's will. That's right. In other words, the devil wants you to be God's enemy. That's right. See, God wants you to be his sons. And God wants you to be his daughter. And just like God got an agenda, glory to God, the devil have an agenda. That's right. The devil don't want nobody to be God's sons. No. And the devil don't want nobody to be God's daughters. No way. So the devil set up something else. Yep. I want everybody to be God's Enemy. Enemies. Imagine being the enemy of God. That's right. James 4 and 4, quickly. James 4 and 4. James the Bible chapter. says. James 4 and 4, ye adulterers. Ye adulterers. And adulteresses. No, ye not. That the friendship of the world. That the friendship. Friendship. With wickedness. Is enmity with God. Brings a wedge between you and God. Whosoever therefore. Oh, thank God whosoever therefore. Will be a friend of the world. Will be a friend of the world. Is the enemy of God. Whosoever therefore. You cigarette suckers and wine drinkers. Beer guzzlers. Party goers. Yeah. Club goers. You're not God's friend. That's right. The Bible speak plain what you are. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? You see, when you connect it to the world, that's enmity. enmity. That's a wedge between you and God. That's right. What is it? Whosoever, whosoever therefore. Therefore. Whosoever. 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 That's why a Baptist man can't be preaching up here. That's right. He, he got to believe what God believes. That's right. That's right. So everybody is not your, my brother. No. You ain't a brother because you're black. What kind of dumb reason is that? <laughs> you black? That's a reason to be a brother? A brother. Because you're black? <laughs> Dogs are black. That's right. Crayons is black. That's right. Suits are black. Yeah. Oh, yes. The color of the skin is not the true establishment of brotherhood. No way. True brotherhood is when you got a good relationship and on good terms with God. That's right. When you're on good terms with God, he'll teach you how to be on good terms with humanity. That's right. And then you'll see the black and white saying there's one God. That's right. You'll see the brown, yellow, and red all agreeing. Yeah, we all must repent and be baptized. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, you ain't never experienced true brotherhood until you obey and walk with God's order. Whosoever, therefore, whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world, will be a friend of the world, is the enemy of God. Oh, whosoever, therefore, I, I'd rather be on God's side. Oh, yeah, that's right, amen. And when you want to be on God's side. You're going to have enemies in your family. Oh, yes. They're preachers now, my enemies, and I'm, and I'm glad for them. That's right. Amen. I mean, they can't stand me, hate me, put contracts out on me. <laughs> I had a bishop call me the other day. I didn't know him. He said, Pastor Jenny, you don't know me. I said, that's quite obvious. He said, but I got a question for you. I said, what is it? And I think he was from uh, Arizona. He said, uh, if you, if someone wanted to debate you, he said, all right, well, let me use myself as an example. I said, all right. He said, uh, 
if you wanted to debate me, I said, yes, sir. And I say, no, I don't want to debate you. Will you walk in my church and try to force my hand? I said, no, I'm not that type of man. No. I said, I don't walk in nobody's church I disagree with. I said, because you got your right to usher me out. That's right. I said, I can't force you to debate me. You tell me you don't want to debate me, then I'm, I'm done. So yeah. moving on. <laughs> I said, why you ask? He said, well, I, I, I got some friends of mine who said they want to debate you, and if you don't do it, they say they're going to walk in on you. I said, they won't be the first ones. I don't mind you walking in, as long as you behave right. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, because First Church ain't like these other churches oh, no. you, that you can step in and pull knives out and, you know, pull guns out and start shooting people. And That's right. Everybody in here ain't saved good. That's right. There's some people here still trying to be saved. In other words, we don't roll over for no devil. That's right. So we don't mind men coming in. I mean, they come in every time. Everywhere I go all around the world, they come in. But it is ignorant for any man, regardless of who he is, think you can come in and just disrupt service and think you can keep disrupting service. Right, right. And you won't hear the song, Usher Him Out. That's right. You will hear the song, Usher Him Out. That's right. Because too many tried it. Yeah. I feel as though that if I got to walk in the church to try to force my belief on you, I want your attention too bad. Right. Yeah. Maybe me think of when I was in Louisiana, and uh, I wasn't webcasting that day. My cameraman wasn't even there. They didn't make it. And uh, I wasn't up no more than a few seconds. A man threw his hand up. I said, yes, sir. I want to debate you. Where are the cameras at? Are the cameras on? <laughs> he wanted camera time. That's right. And because he was begging for the camera so much, I said, you know what? I'm not going to debate you. No. He said, I came over from Chicago. I said, that's your business. You waste your money. <laughs> I said, I didn't ask you to come and didn't know you was coming. That's right. I said, what you do now, you find a way to get back to Chicago because I ain't helping you. <laughs> he said, you scared. I said, not even the devil believed that. But what you do now, right. you go on back to Chicago because you're not going to sit here and keep interrupting service because you are begging for attention because you want to be a star. That's right. You want to be a star, go to California, learn how to read scripts, and work for uh, 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 MGM somewhere. <laughs> That's right. That's right. This is about your soul being saved. Amen. So there are many that walked in and end up getting embarrassed. But I never walk in on nobody's congregation. I disagree with many men. Yeah. But I would never walk in on a congregation That's right. and be disruptive. Not even raise my hand up and disrupt. Right. I will never do it because I'm not desperate for nobody's attention. That's right. In fact, Jesus didn't tell me to do that. No. Jesus said, if they don't accept what you preach, right. shake the dust. That's right. Take the dust off your feet. your feet. Don't go try to force your belief on them. No. Right. None of the apostles try to force what they had on nobody. No. They don't accept it. Shake the dust. Shake the dust off. And move on to the next place. That's right. If my people which, which are, are called, called by my name do what? shall humble themselves. Human family, everybody in the world have to humble themselves. That's right. Everybody. Under the mighty hands of God and he will exalt you in due time. In due time. When you humble yourself, nobody humbled themselves without surrendering. That's right. Humility and surrendering goes hand in hand. In the book of James, chapter 4 and verse 6. That's what? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud. God resists the proud. The proud. But giveth grace but unto give the humble. grace and mercy to the humble. S submit yourselves. There it is. Submit yourselves therefore to God. That's it. Give in. Give up. That's right. Hang God. Give over. That's right. Submit yourself to who? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. And what? Resist the devil. Glory to God. Amen. Now the Bible is preaching conflict. 
Oh, yes. What do you mean? The very act of submitting bring a conflict between you and the devil. That's right. Because if I submit to God, I'm fighting against what the devil's trying to get me to do. That's right. So there's a law in my members warring against, against the law of my, mind. of my mind. But I see another law in my members. Listen at Brother Paul. In Romans chapter 7 and verse 23. That's what many of you that are watching now and going through. Conflict. Right. No, it's wrong. The sit under them women preachers, but you are conflicted because it's your mama. That's right. Amen. That's right. Conflict because it's your wife. Yeah. Conflict because your bishop keep putting his wife up and his daughters and old mothers in the church. And yet you hear the Bible says, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to use my authority over the man. When your understanding come open to what is true, it brings a conflict to that which is in your life that's wrong. That's right. Why? Because my eyes come open come now. Yes. Glory to God, I can see better. That's right. And when I can see better, now I don't look at church the same way no more. Yeah. Amen. Oh, no. hey, now I just don't wander in any building that got a cross on a steeple. That's right. I know, hallelujah, I know better now. Yeah. Thank God my understanding has been enlightened. That's right. Amen. I, 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 I can make religious decisions more better now. That's right. Wonderful. Won't find me no more no. in the church of your choice. Go ahead. You'll find me now in the church that started by Jesus Christ. That's right. That's where you'll find me now. Glory That's to right. God. Yeah. Eh? That's right. What did the Holy Ghost say? But I see another, in Romans 7 and verse 23. I see another law. In my members. What is it doing? Warring. Is that, is that, is that odd? Warring. Oh, it's a go with the law. Of my mind. Of my mind. And in other words, my body wants to do one thing. Yeah. My mind thinks something else. That's right. Yeah. That's right. My mind. Now, when the mind and the body was on one accord, is when the mind is carnal That's right. and the body act out the carnality. That's right. But now when the spiritual mind comes in, mm -hmm. it interferes with the carnal mind. That's right. And then when God bring his mind to you through preaching, yes. Bible says God make manifest his word. Through preaching. Through preaching, the purpose of the preaching of the gospel, why is it called a hammer? Because your mind is stubborn. Right. Thank God and you that's need right. something that's hard that's right. to hit up hit against it. the rock of carnality. That's right. Yeah? That's right. Hit it. Hit, hit it. that carnal mind. Hit it. Then the Bible come as a sword. That's right. It has to, you have to sever ties. Yeah. Because your mind is so connected to what's out there. Yeah. Now, it, 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 it becomes a sword, sword that it may sever ties. That's right. Cut you away from the way you think. Yeah. Cut you away from the way you feel. Yeah. Then it takes on another form as an axe. Axe. Why? Because the mind, That's right. the kernel thoughts is being nurtured. Yeah. The kernel emotions of the heart is being nurtured. That's right. So God said the act is laid at the roots. At the roots. Of the Lord, why you come as an axe? Because I have to hit the source of the evil. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. Go right to the root of it. That's it. You know, when you take an axe and hit the root of that plant, uh, you, you, you killed the plant. That's right. Viewers and you that are here, what is the source of your evil? Oh, yes. Oh, it take God. The source of your evil is the devil himself. That's right. Huh? But I see another law in my members. Do you see that law? Amen. The only time you begin to see that law in your members Amen. born against the law of your mind. That war only starts 
Not before. It only starts when you make it up in your mind right. to obey God. That's right. Yeah. I find then a law. Glory to God. That's right. Why? Because now you're going against the grain. Now you're picking up a lifestyle you didn't have. Right. Yeah. Your lifestyle was partying and drinking and gang banging and shooting and robbing and stealing and getting high, hanging out all day and all night and then wandering some fake man-made church so you can feel better about yourself and then you find out going there on a Sunday was just as bad as going to a party on Saturday. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now a conflict. That's right. And God wants you to be conflicted. That's right. That's right. You know, when there's a conflict, it's the interruption of peace. Yes. Huh? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God come. Oh, yes. Glory to God. He make manifest his word through preaching that you may have a conflict in your soul. That's right. Between you and Satan. That's God right. bring conflict to break up your relationship with the devil. That's right. Hallelujah. You know, you know, you know, when that woman start get interested in another man, it's a conflict. Yeah. She's conflicted now. Oh, yeah. Her interest has changed. That's right. And then that man that she's with see that she's leaving? Yeah. Arguments start. Oh, yeah. He may try to resort to different methods to entice her to keep her there. That's right. Start buying her things. Start offering her things. Start giving her money. Start buying her things that he never used to do. His objective is I'm willing to do whatever it takes to keep you. That's right. That's the way the devil is. That's right. Amen. The devil, he sees that his grip upon many is getting more loose yeah. and more loose. And hallelujah. Glory to God and more loose. What does it do? Thank God he offered you things you never was offered before. That's right. Amen. He, he, in other words, he want to reaffirm. Yeah. Thank God his relationship with you. That's right. He come appearing sweeter. Yeah. He come appearing more loving. Oh, yeah. Just keep this one thing in mind. The devil is wicked, he's wicked, he's wicked, and he will always be wicked. His intentions are wicked. His intentions shall forever be That's right. against God. That's right. Doesn't matter how good they make you feel. Doesn't matter how good it sounds. It doesn't matter if you become wealthy from it. The intentions of Satan shall always be that damn your soul throughout eternity. That's right. But you can't see it. Yeah. You can't see it because the smile that he or she had. Yeah. You can't see it because you can't pass up that roll of money. That's right. You can't see it because you're just getting drunk and having a time of your life. Oh, yeah. Hey, we take God, but you bear this one thing in mind. In order for you to have a war between your mind and your body, you must begin to want to obey God. That's right. That's right. Eh? But I see another law in my members. I see another law. I see sin. That's in my members. Sin is in my members. You know, sin is the law of the flesh. That's right. And, and the law that's in the mind, the mind don't get God's law until the ears hear it. For they when, that are, when the ears hear it, the Bible says, he that hath the ear, let him hear what the spirit, or let him hear what God say to the church. So when the ear become tuned to the sound of God's word, now the mind start think about what the ears hear. That's right. And now when the mind start pondering over what the ears hear, now the body becomes conflicted. That's right. Now he start thinking. Rethinking while he's driving home with his third wife. Yeah. He hear the message bound by the law. That's right. Glory to God, bound by the law. Yeah. Long as you live, can't be free unless you die. Mm -hmm. And here the Bible makes it plain. That's right. Hey man, if you got another one while the other one live, you're in adultery. adultery. He's conflicted now. Yeah. Before then, he was lovey dovey and all mushy. That's right. Huh? That's hey right. Man, but there's another law that don't broke it to his oh, mind. That, that's right. Got him thinking, glory to God, different than he thought before. That's right. And as long as he starts pondering over that thought, now his heart is affected. Yeah. Now he starts feeling in a manner. 
Glory to God that he didn't plan to fill. That's right. You see, God can take your heart and make it fill what you didn't plan. Yeah. That's why the Bible said the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Lord. God start manipulating the emotions of your heart That's and right. give you feelings you never oh. thought you had. That's right. What is God doing? Hallelujah. He's bringing two emotions oh, yes. at one time. That's right. Hate and love. And love. Uh -huh. That's right. Hey. That's right. God, I said. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. He brings two emotions. Oh, yes. Everybody that got in mind to serve him got two emotions in them. That's right. Do you hear what the Bible says? Well, but I see another law in my members. Wait a minute. I see what? Another law in my members. That law is a law of love. That's right. She that live in pleasure is dead while she lives. While she lives. When you, that law that's in your members is the love of the world, yeah. the love of the flesh. Right. But what is this? But I see another law in my members. What is it there? War against the law of my mind. That's the law of hate. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead, man. Jesus said, if any man. Yeah. Come after me. After me. Go and take God. Yeah. And don't deny himself. He got to hate, hate his own life. That's right. Got to hate mother. If any man come to me. Do you hear this? In St. Luke 14 and verse 26. If any man come to me. And hate. And hate. Not his father. Amen. That's the law that's in your mind. In the mind. That's right. Make you hate mother. What do you mean? Now you got to hate the lifestyle that your mama lived that's against God. Yeah. And, and mother and wife. Read it again. If any man come to me and hate not his father. Hate not his father. You got to hate the lifestyle that your father lived that's against God. And mother. Hate the lifestyle your mother lived that's against God. And wife. Mm. You got to hate the fact. Amen. You got to hate the fact the way the wife lived. That's right. Yeah. And that and you got to love the fact she ain't yours. All right. My Lord, my Lord. You got to love the fact the second wife ain't yours. Mm. You got to fall in love with that law. That's God right. says it's not yours to let your first wife die. Now you got to fall in love with that fact and got to tell her, I'm so glad you're not mine. Wonderful. Mm. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. She's not mine. Amen. <laughs> and to do that, Mm. You got to hate adultery and love God's precepts. That's right. Do you see the conflict I'm talking? Amen. Do you see the conflict? But I see another law in my members warring. Everybody. Warring. There's war. Warring. Glory to God, you can feel the explosion. That's true. When you walk through scriptures, you're walking on a spiritual landmine. That's right. Hey! That's right. It's a landmine. That's right. Yeah, man, certain scriptures, you know, uh, certain scriptures, you put your feet on them. That thing blow up, it calls you a casualty now of war. That's right. That's why you got to be injured with scripture. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah? That's right. Scripture got to injure you. Yeah. Injure you so bad until you like, I don't want that thing no more. Amen. When you think about it, it gives you pain. Yeah. Two emotions. Oh, yes. That's ignited. In the soul of man. My yeah. Lord, my Lord. Hate and love. That's right. In fact, now the thing you love, you got to hate it. That's yes. Love. That which do I. In the book of Listen Rome, at this. Romans 7 and at verse 19. For the good that I would, I the do good not. That I would. I do not. I do not. But the evil which I would not. The evil that I don't do. That I do. Mm. Yeah. The good. That I would, that I would, I do not. Amen. The good that I would, that I would, I do not. I don't do that. But the evil which I would not, but the evil that I would not, that I do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I do the evil. That's right. But I don't do the good. That's right. What is the evil? The evil. Is God will concerning the flesh. That's right. Do you hear this? For the good that I would. The good that I would. I do not. I, I, want, I want to obey God. 
But they, that, that, that's the good that I would. That's the good. I should do that. That's right. Because there's none good but one, and that one is God. Right. I should do that good, and the good that I should do, I'm disobedient. That's right. I'm not doing it. Yeah. But the evil, which I would not, that I normally wouldn't do, that I do. I, I'm going to do that because my flesh wanted. it. That's right. Conflict. Conflict. Mm. God's precepts teaches the church how to not only deal with your spiritual conflict, but how to master the conflict. That's right. So the good to the flesh don't take you over yeah. and conquer the mind. Right. Are you listening? For the good that I would, I do not. And what else? But the evil which, the I, evil would not, which I would not, that I do. I do. Now, if I do that I would not. If I do what I wouldn't do. It is no more I that do it. It ain't no more that I. But sin that dwelleth in me. Ah. That's right. Everybody got sin in them. Oh, yes. Every, I, I said everybody. 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 That's right. Everybody got sin in them. Oh, yeah. Amen. That's why they need God 